Hey everybody, Ed Holmut, Old Guy Hi-Fi channel. I hope everyone's doing well today. Today I thought I'd do kind of a review overview, maybe systems configuration recommendation based around my Cambridge AXR100. This is my baby. I love this piece. It's been in my system for three years. It, it's my daily driver, was my daily driver up until recently. Um, I love it to death. Uh, the sound is amazing and we'll talk about that at the end. The unit itself, as I said, is a receiver. Now, the only difference between a receiver and an integrated amplifier is this does have a tuner module. And when we look inside, you'll see it's so small, it has no significance in the circuitry at all, it has no impact on the sonics at all. Also too, when we look inside, you'll see the power supply is absolutely massive on this thing. So they rated it 100 by two into eight ohms. And although they don't publish a rating, my guess is looking at the power supply, and based on the output devices, this thing could easily do 150 watts by four, by two into four ohms. So very powerful, very dynamic. And we'll talk more about that at the end when I summarize. The unit has three analog inputs and three digital inputs. The digital inputs are one coax, two optical. It also has a moving magnet and high output moving coil phono stage, which is really very good. It has a set level um, record out RCA if you want to go to a tape deck or something like that. It also has a subwoofer out, a dedicated subwoofer output that's crossed over 200 hertz. Now there's no base management. You can use the base management that's built into your subwoofer and or some other device, which we'll talk about a little bit later, um, but it works ext extraordinarily well. And that's the way I used it for the longest time on my big deaf tech sub. Um, the unit's wonderful. It sounds great. It's got a lot of flexibility. It can run two pairs of speakers. So I do run my, uh, run my Haffler surround wiring configuration on it. And I've done that for years as well. And it's just a really great unit. So what I'm going to do is we're going to power it off. I'm going to spin it around and I'm going to show you the goes into and goes out is on the back of it. Oh, by the way, I forgot to mention this button here. It has bass and treble controls and they're accessible from the remote. So that's kind of a nice function. Anyway, let me power it off. We'll spin it around. We'll take a look at the back and then we're gonna go dig in and take a look at the inside and I'll come back and give you my feelings about it. So here we are looking at the back panel of the Cambridge AXR100. I'm gonna start down in this end. These are the antenna inputs for the tuner. I have no idea how they work. I've never used them. Underneath that, we have our digital inputs, uh, two optical, one coax, and they go in and feed an internal Wolfson uh, DAC. And it is quite a good DAC. Now this Wolfson chip has been used by other manufacturers in some very expensive DAC, outboard DAC products. So it actually has a really good sonic character. It also has this little USB service port and that's really all it is. And I'll be honest with you, what I've used that for is to power USB things. At one point I had a little IR blaster and I needed to power it. And I've had some little small USB powered DACs that I've been testing. And I use it to power those rather than run a cable in a wall wart and all that other stuff. It has three analog inputs. It has a moving magnet and high output moving coil phono input along with the ground. It has a set level uh, record out that you could go to a tape deck or something like that if you wanted to. It has a subwoofer out. Now there's no base management unit other than this subwoofer output is crossed over at 200 hertz and works extraordinarily well. This is the little Bluetooth module. I don't use it much when I have folks over and they want to play something from their phone. Boy, it connects up right away. It's solid, sounds good. I think it's Bluetooth 5.0 and whatever the Apple codec is, AAC. As you can see, we can run two pairs of speakers. Um, I use the back pair for running my Haffler surround system. Now, the nice thing is from the remote control, I can turn on or off the A pair, turn on or off the B pair, turn on both pair, or turn off all speakers if I wanna do some headphone listening. And the headphone jack sounds really nice. You'll see behind this is a fan, and we'll talk about that when we open it up. And then there's the IEC power socket. And that's really that. So I would ask that if you find the video interesting, please give me a like and a subscribe. I would appreciate your subscription a great deal. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna pop the top on this and we're gonna take a look inside and then we're gonna come back and I'll talk about my feelings about the unit. All right, everyone, there you can see the inside of the Cambridge AXR100. And the first thing that catches your eye, obviously, is that massive power supply, the huge toroidal power supply. And this is where this unit gets that tremendous power, not only the 100 watts of channel, but the dynamic power as well. So AC coming in, AC filtering and so forth to the transformer. Now, the heat sink is really beautiful. It's a solid piece of extruded aluminum and it has a fan at the end. Now, I've run this thing hard, hot and hard, and I've never heard the fan running. I, I know it's run, but I've never heard it run. Um, two power caps, they're 10,000 microfarads a piece. Um, great dynamic range on this. 
You can see on the circuit board, and this is kind of an important thing for me at least, these are all through hole components. That means the component goes down through the PC board and it's soldered rather than surface mount. And I'm going to reconfigure in just a second and show you the output devices, but I also want to show you the DAC board and I want to show you the difference between through hole technology and surface mount technology. And on a DAC, surface mount technology is okay. But in an amplifier, current, you need current and current is best handled through a through hole componentry. So I'm going to take a second and reconfigure. Apologize for the wobbliness and I apologize for the lighting. I'm obviously not great at this stuff. So as you can see here, these are the output devices. There's two output devices per channel, push-pull configuration, and again, very, very good power. So now I'm going to set this down and we're going to zoom in on the DAC board. So hopefully you can see there, that's the DAC board and the DAC chips. Now you'll see those small components. They are mounted to the surface of the PC board rather than being mounted through the PC board, like through a hole. And again, there's another look at the output devices on this. So as you can see, the internals of the Cambridge AXR100 are really robust, and it's what gives it its amazing sound quality. Oh, by the way, I mentioned it, but that's the whole thing that's the tuner in this. It's just this little box and that one ribbon cable. If it wasn't there, this would be an integrated. So a good look inside the Cambridge AXR100. Well, as you can see from looking inside, this unit is extraordinarily well built, robust and powerful power supply. This thing has great dynamics, great drive. Um, it just, it, it never runs out of power no matter what speakers I've hooked it up to. So let's talk about the sonic quality of it. Um, from a sound standpoint, I'm not sure I've heard a better receiver integrated amplifier product under a thousand bucks that can beat this. No kidding. Um, it is a class leader in sound quality. It is quite amazing. Because of that huge power supply and all of that power on reserve, the bass is just so deep and so powerful. Well-defined, good nuance, just amazing. And as you move up into mid-range, the attack on toms and snares and obviously electric bass and acoustic bass is all there. I listen to Yo-Yo Ma a lot and his cello, I get the strings, I can hear the string, the bow on the strings, but then I can hear the body of that cello. I can hear that wooden body. So great detail. Male vocals are excellent. Through the mid-range, everything is clean. If it does have a character, and they all have a character, it airs just slightly on the warm side of neutral. And I think that's a positive, at least for me, that's a positive because I listen for hours on end and fatigue's a big issue. And fatigue occurs in that mid-range, upper mid-range, lower treble um, at you know two to 4K uh, frequencies. That's where fatigue, that's where stridency, that's where that comes from, um, brightness per se. This has none of that. It sounds absolutely natural. Male vocals are great. Female vocals are absolutely excellent. Um, I listen to Bonnie Raitt. I love her stuff. She sounds great. You can hear the attack of her, her pick on the guitar strings on that Fender Strat that she plays. Just wonderful. You can hear her voice. The voices are detailed and natural, and you get more than just the voice. You get the sense of their mouth opening, closing, you know, maybe their tongue moving around. It, that kind of detail is in the mid-range. As we move up in the frequencies, the treble is... Very detailed, but smooth. It's not etched. It's not edgy in any way, shape, or form. And again, that allows you to listen for hours on end, and that's a big deal for me. So detailed, wonderful, just amazing. And there is enough air there to give you a sense of the room uh, and kind of help flesh out the soundstage. And then speaking of soundstage, the soundstage on this thing is gigantic. It is enormous. It is amazing how wide it gets, way outside the width of the speakers. Good center, locked solid center image, great height. You can hear, you know, uh, if you're listening to a female vocalist and she's standing in a microphone, you can hear her voices in space at about the right height where it should be if you were sitting in front of her. So it's great that way. Great depth. Is it the deepest thing in the world? No, but it's at 600 bucks. And at under a thousand bucks, yeah, it's better, deeper than almost anything else I've ever heard of in that price range. So excellent in that in that way. So I again a faithful companion to me. I think it could be a faithful companion to anybody. And at 600 bucks, I think it's a scream in value. So let's talk about how I would configure this. Obviously, out of the box, you can use it as a tuner. You can plug your turntable into it. Um, if you have a uh, TV with an optical out, you can plug an optical out into this and run your TV sound through it. No, it doesn't have uh, HDMI, ARC, or eARC. But again, in, for most people, I don't think you need that. You can just use the Cambridge remote control to control the volume. 
What you can also do though is let's say you want to get into streaming. So let's do it on a budget. So we got 600 bucks there. Let's add $80 for the Wii Mini. This is a great combination and I've done this. And one of the cool things about this and the next Wii product I'm going to show you is this is USB powered. You remember that USB uh, a jack on the back of the unit. Well, you can power your Wheem product off that USB-A and then take the optical out of this and put it into the number two optical on the inside and use the inboard DAC, that Wolfson DAC chip, which is way better than the DAC in this. And you've got great sound and you've got all the convenience of digital EQ if you want it, and obviously all your streaming services and things like that. So, excuse me, really, really well featured with the Wii Mini, but we go one step further. Let's do a Wheem Pro. And again, we can drive the Wheem Pro off the USB on the back of this. We can take the optical out into the optical in, and the internal deck is much better than the Wheem deck. But with the Wheem Pro, you add things like uh, digital uh, room correction. And that's kind of a compelling feature, I think. Um, I think it's just really neat that way. So you can go optical out into here. You have your, your room correction functions and all of that, all your streaming functions. And again, we're at 600 bucks, 80 bucks for this, 680. 150 bucks for that, 750. So I think it's $750, that's very compelling. There are some limitations to the Wien product. Obviously, it's a budget price product. I mean, it, it exceeds expectations for sure. But let's say you wanna go better than that and you wanna kind of go all out, go all in and really, really enjoy some super high-end audio quality. Well, the way you do that is you add the Cambridge MX N10. This is an amazing streamer. It is the Cambridge Stream Magic Stream Module is probably the best streaming scheme and, uh, and implementation that I've heard really until you get into some stupid several thousands of dollars worth of uh, streamer products, you know, or like Lumen, things like that. This is an outstanding product. It punches way above its weight. So it's 600 bucks here, 500 bucks here. You're at $1,100. And I'll tell you what, you couldn't find an all-in-one at $1,100 that will give you the performance of this and the sound quality. And again, remember, this is a Class AB amplifier. So it is a huge step up from the little FunFi Class D stuff. And sonically, the streamer is outstanding. Now, what I do when I'm listening to it is I take the analog out from this because it has a very good deck inside. Um, and I feed it into one of the analog inputs on the Cambridge. Uh, AXR100, and then I take the optical out and I feed it into the DAC in this, and then I can switch on the front panel between analog one and digital one and listen to the difference in sound because the DACs do sound different. Sometimes, depending on the source, this could be, it's an ESS DAC, so it's got a little bit of that traditional glare that ESS Delta Sigma DACs have. Um, and the Wolfson is a Delta Sigma, but it doesn't have glare. It's very, very uh, smooth and very detailed, but very smooth. So. I like them both, I can listen to them both, and that gives me the flexibility. So again, I can have my TV plugged in on optical, I can have my streamer DAC product plugged in, either on analog or on optical. With these, I recommend using the internal DAC. With this, you can use this DAC, the DAC in here, or you can use the internal DAC, and you'll be satisfied with either one for sure. So I think, again, the Cambridge AXR100 offers a terrific value in performance, exceptional uh, sonic performance, good flexibility, is it the you know most goes into and goes out as in the world? No, but it's plenty for what I think most people are going to need. And it just sounds so good and I love it very much. Well, hopefully you enjoyed the video. If you did, I would appreciate a like and a subscribe. The more subscribers I have, the easier it is for manufacturers to uh, provide me with review samples. And that's really important. And the more stuff I have, the more videos I can make. And hopefully the more fun we can have together with all of this. Please like, subscribe, comment. Anybody who's commented knows I read through all the comments. I respond to the comments, good, bad, or otherwise. Um, I appreciate your comments. I think that's an important part of kind of the community that we're starting to develop here, which I'm very proud of and very humbled by, to tell you the truth. Um, comment. Below in the description of the video are obviously Amazon affiliate links. You know all about that stuff. Below that are playlists. Now, I've been pleading with people to send me playlists. I just got a whole bunch. I found out that for whatever reason, the link to playlists got put in a holding folder in 
Amazon or in uh, YouTube studio and I never saw them. I've went through them, cleaned them all out, and now I know that's what happened. So I apologize for anybody who sent me playlists but didn't get a response from me. Everybody got a response from me last night on it. So please send me your playlist. I will take care of getting them into the community post. There are about 11 or so playlists in there right now. They're just amazing. It's so much fun to listen to. I was doing that last night. So thank you for your playlist. Anyway, again, please like, subscribe, uh, comment, follow me on Instagram if you wish. Um, I am so grateful for the time you give me. This is just, it's so humbling. And all of the response I'm getting from everyone in the comments is positive. I mean, there's some negative stuff and that's fine. I can deal with that. Um, but it's just, it makes me feel really good that you guys get something from these videos. And that's really the whole point of this. The, the, the ability to help people find new music, share their music, enjoy their music, because bottom line, that's this stuff only exists to give us pleasure when we listen to our music. And to make a, a really nice quote, when words fail, music succeeds. That's Hans Christian Andersen. Um, thank you so very much. This is Ed Holmwood, Old Guy Hi-Fi Channel, saying now it's time for you to go listen to some music, maybe on a Cambridge AXR 100 with a cool streamer. Thanks so very much. Have a great day.